to a new episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Our episode today is on Watani and Coptic identity. Watani newspaper founded in Cairo in 1958. Our guest today is Mr. Yusuf Sedhum, editor-in-chief of Watani newspaper. Welcome, Mr. Yusuf Sedhum. Hello, how are you? Thank you for accepting my invitation to be on our program today, Coptic Civilization on Logos TV. It's my honor and pleasure. Thank you, sir. What, in 1958, what prompted Mr. Antoun Sedhum to establish and start yet a new Coptic newspaper and yet a new Copt uh, Egyptian newspaper? As uh, my father told us in the family, uh, he was always uh, feeling indebted to his country to uh, be a patriot who feels uh, what's taking place in his country and to contribute in uh, changes that he feels as a citizen uh, uh, necessary for its progress and uh, he always dreamt that he would have the tool to express this and as a Copt he always felt that Copts should contribute in the field of journalism and uh, freedom of expression uh, uh, that's why uh, he was uh, uh, burdened by the idea of establishing a newspaper and he always discussed the issue with his close friends, Copts in most, and uh, 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 that of course uh, took place before Watani was re released in December 1958, uh, before that uh, quite a while, and uh, it took quite uh, a time to uh, arrange uh, its editorial group. Of course, at the time, it was not a large group, uh, but uh, they sat, discussed the mission, uh, why uh, a Coptic newspaper, and it was not meant to be a religious Christian newspaper, it was meant to be another Egyptian newspaper, but to address the Coptic identity and to address the Coptic needs. Uh, of course, also, it took a while to uh, uh, agree upon the name of the newspaper and after uh, considering several options, uh, uh, they agreed upon Watani as they saw that it reflects the identity that they wanted to deliver. Uh, so Watani appeared, uh, as I said, as another Egyptian newspaper. It was a Sunday weekly. And uh, because it was a Sunday weekly, it uh, presented the uh, Christian message and covered church news. And maybe because of that, uh, particular aspect that Watani was since day one regarded as the Christian newspaper. Uh, I may say that uh, religious stuff never uh, occupied more than 10% of the pages of Watani, yet 
they gave what any its identity that was reflected to Egyptians and to its readers from day one. Uh, it uh, presented political, social, economic uh, issues, but what any was proud to be the first, as as my father told us, was proud to be the first Egyptian newspaper to present a special department for uh, women, family, and children. It also presented aspects like literature, uh, arts, uh, music, and uh, history, especially uh, the Coptic history. Uh, Mr. Antoun said he was a member of parliament in the 80s and a member of the General Community Council, Majlis Milli, for many uh, rounds, <clears throat> many terms, and also received national medals at the time of President Nasser and also at the time of President Mubarak. Uh, and uh, he was a national figure and also a leader in the Coptic community. He had that vision and worked hard for it. And uh, he died in 1995. And then uh, th there has been always, from day one, uh, an editor-in-chief of Watani International. Uh, but later, in 1999, you became the editor-in-chief up till now. What did you, what is your vision for the future of Watani? Uh, but uh, while we are doing that, please inform us how the evolution of Watani and its mission evolved in the late 1990s and uh, since in, in the third millennium. As I mentioned, Watani appeared to be an Egyptian newspaper and it remained to do so, uh, serving uh, the, the Coptic and public interest in a Sunday weekly. Um, and uh, because Watani appeared in 1958, uh, looking back, uh, we will not be surprised to see Watani being uh, 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 a newspaper, an ordinary newspaper, without a struggle uh, for the Coptic identity and the Coptic rights. Uh, that remained for 20 years until the late 70s of the last century, when Egypt fell victim to Islamization, and there came winds of change uh, 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 affecting the Copts of Egypt and uh, 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 making them subject to uh, marginalization, uh, to a speech of hatred against their religion and their faith, and uh, putting them under hostilities concerning their churches and their property. Uh, uh, in the, uh, that was accentuated under the, the President Sadat, and it uh, reached its climax in the mid-80s when uh, Mr. Antun Sidhum uh, said that uh, Watani has to revise its uh, uh, journalism mission and to defend Coptic rights. That was done on two levels, highlighting the atrocities that the Copts were subjected to and calling for the uh, uh, regime and the government to protect the Copts as its uh, 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 people. And uh, on another standard, another level, uh, highlighting the Coptic history of Egypt and the Coptic identity and uh, uh, the Coptic uh, uh, participation in all levels of society uh, in, in that 
uh, recent time. Uh, because as Mr. Sidholm said, uh, especially pointing out at the time to the Islamization of the educational curricula and school books and the withdrawal of Coptic history and Coptic contributions to Egypt from our educational school books. He pointed at that in fear, saying that if Watani will not do whatever it can to highlight and keep in the circle of light uh, Coptic history and Coptic identity and Coptic contributions to Egypt, the national memory of what Copts are and what Copts did to Egypt would fade and uh, wear away. So, uh, after 20 years of Watani being just an Egyptian newspaper, it revised its journalistic mission and, as I mentioned, uh, 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 appeared or changed its face to be more Coptic because of these reasons. And that remained for another 20 years until the wake of the third millennium uh, and there was a considerable, another change, which was dictated by uh, Watani serving the Copts and serving the Coptic rites. And that was significant because after nearly 20 years for Watani serving Coptic rites and calling for Christian rites and Coptic rites in building churches, Copts rights to occupy uh, high-ranked jobs, which they were marginalized and kicked off. Uh, Watani started through working with Egyptian, more moderate Muslims, started to uh, be alerted to the fact that <clears throat> the problem is not Christian rights in the first place, that this uh, uh, mission should be reshaped in order to include moderate Muslims and our Muslim friends in that struggle and in that fight with the regime and with the uh, Islamic fundamentalists. Because as they said, your problem is not Christian in the first place. Your problem is Egyptian and we should fight with you in this problem under citizenship equal rights. So we did not let alone Coptic rights or change our fight for Coptic rights, but it was reshaped starting the third millennia under citizenship rights, equality of Christians versus citizenship rights. And I believe that that was a right move, and I'm proud to say that citizenship is now a very dear term which was forged in Article 1 in our new constitution. I, uh, speaking of marginalized, uh, it just happened in my hand a few issues of Watani newspaper, uh, the English language section, uh, named uh, Watani International, and it reads, Power of the Marginalized. And that was the occasion of voting on the new constitution, and this is Watani issue of 26th of January 2014. And uh, it's remarkable. Uh, this means that Watani newspaper was ahead of other national newspapers, or even the only national newspaper that at times spoke against injustice, spoke for the marginalized, spoke for Coptic rights, spoke for equal citizenship, spoke for women's rights, sp spoke for the youth rights. And I wanted to say that 
this book in Arabic, Antun Sidhum, or Mushwar Watani, or Antun Sidhum and the Journey of Watani, <coughs> Uh, was, which was published on the occasion uh, after uh, one year after his death, that he <coughs> wrote in the 1990s against showing the nation that aggression and violence against Coptic property, Coptic life, and Coptic churches, uh, the massacre here and the massacre there, were the starting point of opposition to the government and secular Egypt, national, national Egypt, in support of Islamization. He pointed this out clearly. But let me jump 20 years later when you, Mr. Youssef Sedhom, as editor-in-chief, wrote a, an editorial against the fake election of President Bashar Assad of Syria and his elevation to the presidency as heir, or it's almost a monarchy, uh, and, and becoming uh, president of Syria just because he was the son of the president. And when you wrote an article against that, Watani was the only, to my knowledge, Watani was the only new national Egyptian newspaper to write against that uh, promotion of Bashar al-Assad in fear of perception that these newspapers are, uh, by inference, referring to President Mubarak uh, bringing up or grooming his son to become the heir of the Egyptian throne. Uh, so, at certain times, Watani was the only national conscience in the Egyptian media to talk about injustice, including the disasters that uh, President Mubarak's regime was bringing the country down to. What make, made you write that uh, editorial article? Uh, was it 2005, the year? And uh, did you receive any trouble because of that? Well, uh, I felt uh, very worried and concerned following what was taking place in Syria and how after the passing away of uh, Al-Assad senior, the father, uh, Hafiz Al-Assad, and the military leaders uh, bringing his son, Bashar Al-Assad, who was not involved in Syria nor in politics, and just putting him as uh, uh, the new president uh, in a form which uh, reflected a false picture of monarchies, as you mentioned. Uh, when the king dies and there is the heir to the throne, uh, Bashar al-Assad was inheriting a republic. And uh, that was controversial. And uh, as it worried me, of course, it didn't worry me in the first place because of Syria. Uh, while I would uh, care for Syria uh, as much as Egypt, yet it worried me twice because of what was going under the surface and silently being infiltrated to the minds and hearts of Egyptians in Egypt. The idea of promoting Mubarak's son, Gamel, to uh, uh, be an option for uh, uh, being president after his father, and the idea of preparing him to be so. Uh, and uh, when I wrote this article, I wrote it under the title, Republics are also inherited. And uh, I was indirectly pointing at Egypt and its regime that uh, uh, at the time I wrote, I do not think that Egyptians are ready for this idea to be adopted in their country and it would be very difficult to swallow the same scenario which took place in Egypt here, in, uh, which took place in Syria, I'm sorry, 
to be uh, uh, followed here in Egypt. Yeah, that was very courageous. I, I really admire you for this and also for uh, long, many years of editorials that uh, speak against injustice and speak for liberty and, and citizenship. Five, 55 years of success of what a newspaper is tremendous. Many newspapers uh, go up and down and disappear and, and only billionaires uh, can support the, uh, sorry, only newspapers supported by billionaires survive. And uh, Watani is a, is a popular newspaper, supported by the uh, common person, the average person buying it every Sunday morning, and also moral support by reading it. Now the internet website always uh, improving uh, from level to level. We, I congratulate uh, the newspaper for, for its excellent website. And I wanted to ask you, in 2001, that's 14 years ago, you decided to add English pages and a few years later, French pages. So now if I open uh, the centerpiece of the newspaper, I find the English page, as I show you on, as show on the screen now, and then uh, two pages in English and one page in French. That's perhaps the only newspaper in the Middle East that, that has, combines three languages. What made you go for Watani International in the year 2001? Well, uh, <clears throat> we were uh, thinking of uh, our readers and uh, uh, concerned about uh, hundreds of thousands of Copts leaving Egypt for whatever reason and uh, uh, immigrating uh, to all corners of the world in order to establish a better life for themselves and for their families. And uh, we always uh, knew that uh, their sons and daughters uh, would be a generation uh, born away from Egypt. Uh, maybe their parents would care very much to uh, shift to them the Egyptian identity. Uh, they would do their best to uh, speak to them in Arabic, to teach them their native language. Uh, but we uh, were concerned uh, about their ability, uh, even if they get this, uh, this piece of Egypt, of their homeland, uh, will they, uh, uh, being educated in different languages, mainly in English uh, and other languages of the countries that their parents immigrated to, uh, will they read Watani in Arabic. And uh, we felt the responsibility to uh, uh, stretch our hands to bind them to their own country, to their homeland, to Egypt, and to their Coptic identity. And the simplest way to do so is to uh, uh, send them the message in the language that they speak and the language of the country that they live in. The, of course, the vast majority in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, uh, the, last, the vast majority of immigrants uh, heading to these countries uh, speak Egyptian language. And that is why we, uh, uh, first of all, thought of releasing an English supplement to Watani. And uh, uh, that was, it took time to prepare. And uh, when it was released in, uh, back in February 2001, uh, we cared very much that it would present what on his mission and to present Egypt and its history, the Copts and their history and their identity, also the Copts and their current situation, their problems, their aspirations, 
in order to keep our sons and daughters abroad uh, in the circle of light to all what binds them to their Egypt. I congratulate uh, Watani for its wonderful staff who together as a team are writing about the history of the Copts, especially points of victory and points of violence against them and sacrifices. The 9th of October Maspiro massacre in 2011, the election of Pope Tawadros in 2012, the acts of violence against the Copts and their churches since the early 1970s. All of that history is not written anywhere else. And at least is not in the eyes of, uh, objective eyes of Watani, nor in its completeness and extensive coverage as, as journalist. Uh, I, I definitely, when I grew up, uh, uh, Watani appeared when I was in high school I, as a Copt, I could not find myself in any newspaper. Uh, newspapers treated the Copts as an invisible quantity. Once a year, without exaggeration, once a year would be a, a report about any Coptic event. And not of, always it was positive uh, coverage, nor about good events. But here comes Watani and changes the self-consciousness of myself as a Copt and I grew up since then up till now I treasure every issue of Watani and I keep them in my home handy when I write articles or appear on Logos TV or write about the history of the Copts and their church and their suffering and their victory and their triumphs and their civilization building despite the suffering they are exposed to. So I wanted to thank you, Mr. Yusuf Sedhom, uh, editor-in-chief of Watani newspaper for all of these achievements over 55 years and wish Watani all the best in the future. Thank you, thank you very much. I am honored and uh, I wish uh, the best of wishes uh, to Logos uh, for this special invitation. Thank you and hope to see you again on our program Coptic Civilization. Thank you. Our viewers, thank you for watching Coptic Civilization. This has been uh, an episode on Watani newspaper, Watani and Coptic identity. I'm Michael Saad. See you next week. Yeah.